feel like, feel like, like reality, reality isn't, isn't even real anymore. anymore. It's as if, it's I'm, as if disconnected I'm disconnected from my body, my body and, and the world, the world around, around, me. around me. As if it's, as if it's this, this illusory, illusory meaningless, meaningless dream. 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 Shit. Shit. Am I going crazy? Going crazy? Well, let me just start off the video by saying, no, you're not going crazy. These are very common thoughts that come from experiencing a condition known as derealization and depersonalization. Maybe you've had a traumatic event or you smoked some really potent weed or some other psychedelic that triggered this extremely unpleasant experience and it's been a few months now and you're kind of starting to freak out. You tell yourself that everything's going to be okay but this thing just seems to be getting worse as time goes on and now you find yourself obsessing over this condition by relentlessly searching the internet, which of course doesn't help. Sound familiar? Yeah, I've been there. And not to get too deep into my own story, but a few years ago I had an extremely traumatic experience that catapulted me through the deepest layers of hell which came along with a brutal existential crisis that I just couldn't shake off, at least for nine months. And this included deep grief, existential terror, despair, sorrow, and yep, derealization. Now, before I go on, let me make it perfectly clear that the challenging depersonalization slash derealization aspect of my experience only really lasted for a month or probably even less than that. And I was more on the derealization end of the spectrum, more so than the depersonalization. However, I legitimately believed that my life was screwed up forever. And I went from absolutely losing my freaking mind and thinking I would never integrate back into this reality to actually growing from this experience. If you are currently suffering from this unfortunate experience, let me give you some peace of mind and assure you that this is a lot simpler to overcome than you might think. And just before I go over some practical tips that may help you overcome depersonalization and derealization, allow me to briefly go over what exactly people mean when they are talking about these conditions, which from now I will abbreviate to DR and DP and use them interchangeably. What is the difference between derealization and depersonalization? Are they separate conditions or symptoms that need to be dealt with individually? Even though these disorders have two different names that might imply that they are two separate things, DR and DP are simply symptoms of the same core issue, anxiety. Virtually everybody that experiences one will also experience the other, at least to some degree. It's like when you get the flu, right? Some of us get more of a runny nose and get snotty, while others get more of a scratchy throat, or sometimes a combination of both. These are symptoms that are caused by an underlying factor, which is the flu. It's a defense mechanism that can manifest in different ways. However, I just want to say that for research purposes, it can, of course, be useful to learn about the nuances of these different conditions. But if you want to overcome this, then I wouldn't recommend researching DP too much as this will ultimately only make things worse. So in a nutshell, depersonalization is specifically a sense of detachment from one's identity. For example, when you look into a mirror, you can hardly recognize yourself. I mean, you might cognitively know that you're looking back at your avatar, but it doesn't quite feel right. There's a disconnection there. It's as if you are almost temporarily peeking through the eyes of another character or something. You might look into a photograph of yourself and then you've got these strange feelings that produce this emotional disconnection. Long story short, you just don't feel right in your own skin. And this can be very strange and unsettling. Derealization is when things or people around you seem unreal. Sort of like walking through a dream space. It's sort of like that scene in The Truman Show when Jim Carrey finally realizes that he's in this reality show. What's happening? Nothing. With derealization, you might stumble through life feeling like nothing is real, sort of like you're living in this movie or dream, not really feeling anchored and connected to the world around you. You may feel emotionally cut off from the people you care about, 
like an invisible emotional brick wall that is separating you from others which only further isolates you which of course causes more anxiety which makes these symptoms even worse so why does this happen what is the purpose of depersonalization some potential causes could be a premature psychedelic experience intense stress or a traumatic event or life crisis and remember that dp and dr is not a physical disease like cancer that will plague your life forever like any physical illness ignoring it is not going to make it go away but with dp and dr specifically this does eventually go away especially if you ignore it and this isn't just some naive optimism where ignoring your problems will make it go away but remember that dp and dr isn't the root cause of anything it's a symptom of a much deeper problem dp can actually be a blessing when you break through and come out the other side as it will not only teach you profound lessons on what it truly means to be human by taking that connection away from you but it will also teach you how to be incredibly grateful living in this amazing reality if you allow it to teach you that lesson sometimes to truly know heaven you must experience hell at least to some degree dp and dr is a defense mechanism to protect you from danger and is in fact designed to naturally fade away however I've noticed that heavy psychedelic experiences can cause this condition to linger more than it really should. And the reason for this is because scary trips can overload your mind with massive amounts of your shadow trying to integrate to the whole. And most people aren't ready for such a heavy experience, so their mind has a natural defense reaction that detaches themselves from this reality, or at least this physical plane. And when you think about it, this makes perfect sense considering how painful certain experiences can be. It's like if someone gets the absolute shit kicked out of them, eventually their body's not gonna be able to take the pain anymore, and so they pass out. It's a similar thing with depersonalization, anxiety, and trauma, which can be so overwhelming that your body has this emergency escape plan to get the hell out of this reality until you are ready to deal with it again. This is why in many times of extreme stressful situations like a car crash, war, natural disasters, it's not exactly uncommon for disassociative disorders to get triggered. It's like you hear those stories of people who go into a burning building to save someone and they explain how they had this complete dissociative feeling of being detached from their body and having this derealization or depersonalization experience, but then after their episode is over, they never experienced it ever again. And I believe a big reason why this lasts for longer than it should is because people put too much of their energy into it and don't let go. Just remember that focusing on symptoms rather than underlying causes is what got us into this mental health epidemic in the first place. I just want to remind you as well that there is nothing inherently wrong with escapism. So don't be so hard on yourself for going through this. Yes, it's important to face reality and anchor yourself, but you have to be honest with yourself and not take the process too seriously. It's fear and anxiety that's the real problem here, so being too tough on yourself will only feed that. So try your best to focus on self-love and enjoying the little things. And this brings me to how to overcome depersonalization. A big part of overcoming derealization is a matter of playing the waiting game, believe it or not. And I don't mean staring at your watch constantly, but actually ignoring it completely and do activities that bring you joy. Some ways that can greatly help you overcome depersonalization is number one, psychotherapy. Now this doesn't necessarily have to be a therapist per se, it could be a coach, it could be a good friend that genuinely listens and helps you investigate the root cause of why this thing got triggered in the first place, but it's just important to talk to somebody. Because once you understand why something happened, it makes it much, much easier to move on and let go. Number two, ground yourself. Depersonalization and derealization is a dissociative disorder which takes you away from this physical reality and more up into the clouds. So of course it makes sense to do things that do the opposite and they ground and anchor you into this physical earth. So you can do things like walk barefoot in nature, getting that vitamin D, could be eating whole healthy foods. This could be hanging out with family or just talking to a good everyday person, you know. If you are going through derealization, it is not wise 
to talk about subjects that take you further into the ether. Number three, stay away from mind altering substances. Really, I should have put this at number one and as important as it is to focus on positive things that will help you overcome this, it's equally if not more important to stop doing things that are keeping you in this state. You really need to let your brain recover and taking mind altering substances, especially things like psychedelics and even weed for the most part, unless you're having like really weak strains or whatever. Of course, it depends on you, but it's just best to stay away from all drugs. Give your mind the time to heal and anchor yourself in your sober, normal state. Number four, stay away from philosophies that lean towards nihilism and anything that implies that reality is just a meaningless illusion. Let me make it clear that this is not about what is right or what is wrong. I am purely speaking about what is practical and what actually helps you. And if you are suffering from a dissociative disorder like depersonalization, nihilism is not going to help. And the reason for this is because if you focus on the nihilism, this is just going to feed your existential anxiety, which is the underlying factor of derealization, which is going to make that worse eventually. You need to go towards the opposite end of the spectrum, towards meaning and purpose. Number five, creative outlets. This is definitely one of my favorite and most effective ways that I know in transmuting anxiety to something more positive and connecting to something bigger than myself. Using any medium to self-express will help you in so many ways and this is not even a direct remedy for just your realization. This is more of a remedy for anxiety and dealing with existentialism and stuff. Creativity is one of the main things that make humans humans. We're here to create and express our authentic selves. So whatever you can do to help with that, whether it's writing, music, photography, videography, whatever creative thing you're into, it will just help with so many things. It'll make you happier. Just do it. Go read a book, go to a social event, meet people, do anything that you can to immerse yourself in your own humanity. Because ultimately that's what's going to get you through this. Depersonalization and derealization is an anxiety based condition which is your body's defense mechanism to protect you from harm. DP and DR are just symptoms of a much greater problem which is anxiety and if you want to go even deeper than that it's loneliness but <laughs> that's a whole different beast of a topic which we're not going to get into now. But this is what you should be directing your energy into overcoming rather than the symptoms that it produces. Just stop obsessing over depersonalization and try your best to let it go. Seriously, let it go and focus on being a happy, healthy human, whatever that means to you. Distract your mind if it's too overbearing and entertain yourself if you must. It's seriously a lot more useful than watching yet another video on DP, which is only going to continue this vicious cycle of despair and misery because your brain is going to be set on why you have depersonalization. What's another way I can describe this experience? And your brain's going to naturally look for it. The reason why I got over derealization really quickly actually is because I didn't focus on the derealization. I mean, yeah, I briefly researched it, but I never obsessed over it, which is actually a freaking miracle since I am naturally a very obsessive person. And this is not because I consciously knew this or because I'm particularly smart or anything. I guess my existential anxiety part of it just overwhelmed me more than the derealization. So my focus went to this. And because derealization naturally fades away with time, assuming that you don't metaphorically pick at the scab, I was eventually healed from it and not once experienced this episode again. And I'm talking like not even slightly in two years. So trust me, please stop picking your scab and give your body the opportunity to heal itself. So yeah, guys, just enjoy yourself, hang out with some good friends, put on your favorite podcast, watch a good movie that's of course not about derealization or depersonalization. Just do anything that makes you feel human and fuck this spiritual nonsense that only gets you further into the clouds and away from the earth. And before you know it, you'll feel yourself again. Life is hard enough and is filled with challenges and these boss battles that you have to face. And just like a video game, you don't have to spend your precious resources fighting the little minions when really you should be focusing on defeating the boss himself. 
Because at the end of the day, you can slay all the vampires you want, but they're going to keep coming at you until you take that wooden spike and you pierce it through the head vampire's heart. Easier said than done, right? But I hope I've given you some valuable insight and hopefully nudged you towards the direction of healing. I think too many of us are fighting the wrong battles while the real threat just gets stronger. This is why self-awareness and self-love is key, guys. Take it easy and good luck. You've got this shit. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. I know that dealing with derealization can be difficult for many people. This video was specifically tailored to practically help those who are going through this rather than a scientific overview and research essay on this condition that we don't know a whole lot about. But what I do have is a specific set of skills. <laughs> now, nah, but what I do know is how to ground yourself after a heavy experience that left you up in the in the clouds so hopefully this helped you guys in some ways and even for those who've never gone through derealization i hope i've given you a deeper understanding of what it might be like to go through this condition that being said i'd love to give a shout out to today's sponsor which is you guys <laughs> i know that was a super cheesy way of plugging patreon but Hey man, I've got to give a massive shout out to you guys, for real. All you patrons over at Patreon, you guys are directly funding this channel and helping me do what I do, and I couldn't be more grateful for it. So seriously, you guys are legends. So if you've gotten any value from watching my videos and wish to directly support this channel, then feel free to check out Patreon. Uh, even if it's five, 10 bucks a month, every little bit helps. And this gives you access to our exclusive inner circle via our Patreon Discord server. Uh, it's basically a community of like-minded individuals helping each other with self-development and integration and shadow work and these kind of things. So if this is something that interests you, then again, feel free to check out Patreon. Even if it's a once-off donation at PayPal or getting some merch, every contribution is greatly appreciated. But all that being said, let us know your thoughts below. Have you had experience with depersonalization or derealization or maybe there's something that you disagreed with in this video? I'd love to know. So, yeah, I'm actually going to Peru in four days at the recording of this video, so I'm, I was going to say I'm quite nervous, but I'm actually shooting myself a little bit. Depends. Sometimes I get excited just getting away in Peru, being, spending time in the jungle and all that, but then sometimes I think, oh shit, I'm actually going to do this again. <laughs> it's been three years since I've had my last, almost three years since I've had my last ayahuasca experience. And man, and it was, yeah, it was a big one. So wish me luck, guys, and I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.